How you doing? I'm your man, John Wilson. Today, we're going to learn how to write numbers in scientific notation. We're going to take numbers like this that are in standard form. We're going to put them into scientific notation. And then we're going to take numbers in scientific notation and put them in standard form. If you like what you see, don't forget to like the video and make sure that you click the subscribe button for more videos. Five days a week, every week. All right, let's get started. So we have a number here. This number is written in standard form. We want to put it in scientific notation. Well, you have to understand that scientific notation has a couple parts. First part is a factor, something like 3.4. Could be any number. The key is that there can only be one number to the left of the decimal, and that number cannot be zero. So this is a good factor. After the factor comes a multiplication sign, the number 10, and then an exponent. And the exponent could be positive or negative. So how do we take this and turn it into something like that? Well, we look at this number, first of all, we have 13,468. First thing we ask ourselves, do we have a decimal in this number? No, I do not have a decimal. Since I do not have a decimal, I'm gonna start at the very end of the number, and I'm gonna put a decimal there. Why? Well, because 13,468 is the same as 13,468.0. That doesn't change the number. I just need to know where to put my decimal. So I'm gonna get rid of that zero, I don't need it. Now that we have the decimal, I need to move this decimal in a specific direction. As I said earlier, to have a good factor, you can only have one number to the left of the decimal and that number cannot be zero. So we have to move this decimal as many times as it takes us until there's only one number to the left of it and that number is not zero. Let's see if I did that right. I have 1.3468. I only have one number to the left of the decimal. That number's not zero. That is a good factor. So I'm gonna rewrite my factor as 1.3468 times 10, but I'm missing something. Looking up here, got the factor, multiplication sign, the number 10, I'm missing the exponent. Here's how you identify your exponent. You go back and you look at how many times you had to move the decimal. I had to move it one, two, three, four times. Because I had to move it to the left, my exponent's gonna be a positive four. What if I had to move my decimal to the right? What do you think would be then? That's right, it would be a negative exponent. But because I moved to the That's right, I need an exponent. Now, to identify the exponent, I just have to count how many times I move the decimal. I move the decimal four spots to the left. Because I move to the left, that means that my exponent is going to be positive. And since I moved it four times, it's going to be a positive four. What if I moved my decimal to the right? What would it be then? That's right, it would be a negative exponent. However, in this case, I moved left, so it's gonna be a positive four. I go back and I check my work. Factor good, let's see. One number to the left of the decimal, can't be zero, that's good. Times 10 to the fourth, it's good. I moved it four times to the right, that's a positive four. Let's try another example. As you can see in this example, I have a decimal already in the number, 273.1. Because I already have a decimal, I'm gonna start right where that decimal is. I'm not gonna put one at the end, I already have one. And I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna move this decimal until there's only one number to the left of it that is not zero. So, move it two times, one, two. I moved it to the left, which means that my exponent is gonna be positive. Good, so it's gonna be a positive two. I rewrite my factor as 2.731. Don't forget the multiplication sign. The number 10, and once again, I moved it twice to the left, positive two. Always check your work, factor's good, multiplication sign, number 10, my exponent's good. Next example. Here, we have something a little different. I have 0 
If I were to move the decimal to the left here, I wouldn't be creating a good factor because by moving it to the left, I have to drop a zero. Every number to the left of this is zero. So in this case, I'm gonna move my decimal to the right. I'm gonna start here and I'll move it one, two, three. Can I stop there? That's right, I can't stop there. Because if I were to put my decimal here, all the numbers to the left would be zero. I need at least one number to the left of the decimal that is not zero. So I'm gonna move this one more time. And I drop it right there. I rewrite my factor now, 7.3. All the zeros disappear, I don't need them, so they go away. I write my multiplication sign, the number 10. And then I count how many times I moved the decimal. One, two, three, four. But this time I moved it to the right. When I move it to the right, it's not going to be a positive exponent, it's going to be a negative exponent. Negative four. The other way that you can tell if your exponent is gonna be negative is you can look at the original number. My original number was 0 .00073. If your original number is greater than one, then your exponent is going to be positive. If your original number is less than one, your exponent is going to be negative. I know what you're saying. Well, what if my original number is one? Well, it would also be positive. But if your number is smaller than one, then it is going to be a negative exponent. Let's try taking some numbers from scientific notation and putting them back in standard form now. I have 3.2. 2, 6 times 10 to the second. The key to doing this is to look at your exponent. I need my exponent to be zero. Right now, my exponent is two. So the question is, what can I add or subtract to two to make it zero? Well, the opposite of a positive two is a negative two, which means if I subtract two, that's gonna give me zero. If I subtract 2, that means that my exponent is going to get smaller. If your exponent gets smaller, that means that your factor, this number, is going to get bigger. How does it get bigger? By moving the decimal to the right. Since I subtracted 2, I'm going to move this two times. 1, 2, I drop the decimal right there, multiplication sign of the 10, fall off, and this number is 326. So, exponent gets smaller, factor gets larger. Let's try it again. Four times 10 to the third. Notice here, I don't have a decimal. But once again, I do have one. It's just not visible right now. It's gonna be right after the four because four is the same as 4.0. So I drop the decimal. I realize that this is a three, so I need to subtract three from it to make it equal zero. If my exponent gets smaller, my factor gets larger. So I have to move this one, two, three times. But what goes in those gaps? Do you have an idea? That's right, zeros go in those gaps. Let's see what it looks like a little bit bigger. So I move this one, two, three times, drop the decimal, and in those gaps go zeros. One, two, three, and my final answer is 4,000. One more example. I got 2.61 times 10, but notice that my exponent is a negative three. The inverse or the opposite of a negative three is a positive three. So to get this to zero, I'm gonna to have to add three here. Negative three plus three equals zero. So this time, my exponent got larger. If my exponent gets larger, that means that my factor has to do the opposite. That would mean that this number, my factor, has to get smaller. For it to get smaller, I have to move the decimal to the left. Since I added three here, I'm moving the decimal one, two, three times, I drop it. You know what goes in those gaps? That's right, zeros. So I drop a zero, drop a zero, I rewrite the number as .00261 times 10 falls off, and I'm done. And that's it. That's how you write numbers Standard form into scientific notation, scientific notation back into standard form. Remember to tune in next time for more videos to help you get through math and love it.
My name is John Wilson. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That's another reason math matters.